Now, hidden in questions like this often are certain key assumptions, right? And the key in this case is that uh, the velocity is going to be the same, that he has a certain maximum velocity with which he can throw. And so our overall plan then, and it's always nice to have uh, a plan of attack to the problem, our overall plan is to find what his maximum velocity is from the 100 meter range and then use it to answer the question. Answer the question. Okay, so let's start then with that basic uh, plan of attack. We have to find out what his maximum throwing velocity is from the fact that he has a 100 meter range. So let's draw a sketch then of what's going to uh, be happening there. So this is a projectile range. Tile range type of problem. So the basic idea here is that I'm going to throw a ball here. It's going to start out at a position of zero meters and it's going to end up at a position of 100 meters and it's going to go in some kind of arc trajectory like this and um, we are going to want to know what the initial velocity of this thing has to be for it to have a 100 meter range. Now as you might imagine, a key quantity here is this angle of the initial velocity. If you, throw, if you want to throw something far, generally speaking, you don't throw it straight up because it's going to come straight down on you. You don't throw it straight out horizontally because then it's going to hit the ground very soon. So there's some compromise angle. And we don't have time, although we could, but for this podcast, I'm not going to take you through all that detail. But if we had time, we could prove using the techniques I'm showing you here that the best angle, and I'm going to assume that this quarterback is throwing at the best possible angle because that's a quite long throw, the best angle for a projectile to get the maximum range down the field is some compromise between horizontal and vertical and it turns out to be the perfect compromise between the two halfway exactly, a 45 degree angle. Okay, so that's basically how the, uh, the toss goes. And now our job is to analyze the X and Y motion independently of one another. So what I like to do oftentimes here is to draw a line down the middle of my paper where now I'm going to translate all of the X motion information on this side and all the Y motion information on this side and then try to uh, solve the problem that way. So if I look at x, <clears throat> what do I know? I know that the initial x position, xi, is at 0 meters. I also know the uh, final x position is at 100 meters. Um, what do I know about the velocities? Well, I don't know a whole lot about them right now, although I could uh, figure out, for instance, the initial x velocity. And I can figure that out because um, there's this linkage between the uh, total velocity and the x component of the velocity. So if I were to drop um, a perpendicular down here, this component of this vector, and for doing these kind of projections, uh, take a look at the uh, free body diagram podcast. Projecting velocities or uh, forces or any type of vector is really always the same. And in that case, what you'll find <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, is that um, I'm looking for the adjacent side to this 45 degree angle where the velocity is the hypotenuse. And as I had told you, it's useful to memorize the formula in the form that the adjacent side is equal to the hypotenuse, in this case that's V, times the cosine of the angle. That's the angle that connects um, adjacent to hypotenuse, so times cosine of theta. So I don't want to always be writing 45, so let me just define that to be theta. Um, now, um, do I have some information about the accelerations? Yes, I do. The acceleration in the x direction, I haven't really labeled my axes, I probably should, 
but my standard choice, I'm making sort of the standard choice that x is horizontal and y is uh, vertical straight up. The acceleration in the x direction then, because gravity only acts in the vertical direction, the acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero. Now if I look at what I have, I have um, uh, here position and velocity information. So it makes sense then that I should use the um, standard of those three equations that I showed you on the previous uh, page. Okay, let me put that back in there for a moment. That connects positions with time, with uh, velocities. And the one relating positions and velocities actually ends up telling me something about the time. So um, let's uh, use that one then. So the uh, final position equals the initial position plus the initial velocity in the x direction, which is uh, v times cosine of theta times time t plus 1 half at squared, so plus 1 half axt squared, but ax is of course 0, so I can just cross this term out. But I would like to say that I always like to write down the full formula anyway, just as a matter of style, because that way then I know I've thought through everything. And it's easy enough just to cross out a term afterwards and justify it. You want to justify every step that you make. Now, the last thing I like to do is keep count of my equations and my unknowns. So I could substitute in, and uh, we'll skip this for just right now, uh, I could substitute in x final and x initial when I finally get to the point of solving this thing. Um, I've already substituted in v initial x. So I know everything in this equation here except the, uh, the time t. So actually, given that I've got one equation now and one unknown, I'm able to actually solve for the time t. And to solve that, we would substitute these quantities in. And um, you'll notice that if I were to do that, um, to get at t, what I would do is I would subtract xi from both sides. So over here on this side, I'm going to have x final minus x initial, right? Then to get t, there's just this constant multiplying t. So I'd have to divide by that constant, divide by v times cosine of theta. And then that is going to tell me what time t is. T. <clears throat> In terms of this unknown velocity v, which I guess <coughs> actually is an unknown. Um, so we don't have the, the, um, the problem completely solved at this point. right? So there is this one unknown v here. But of course, that's what we're trying to solve for in the end. So we've got one equation here. And... Um, and uh, we now know the time in terms of some unknown velocity. But at this point, we've made about as much progress as we can on the x side. Let's take a look at the y side. 